Welcome to tutorial series two by Urban Tango Knights. In this series, we are going to expand on what we taught in tutorial series one, such as heroes and ochos. However, in this series, we'll be adding moves such as ganchos, baleos, posadas, paradas, and a, a myriad of other more advanced moves. This will still be at a sort of more novice level. However, these will improve your tango repertoire, improve your technique from those uh, moves we taught in our previous series. Please refer to tutorial series one for techniques such as the technique for doing ochos. And also, even though this series is designed to be a standalone tango tuition series, there is no substitute to go into your local classes, supporting your local tango scene and dancing with as many people as possible. So we encourage you to go to those classes all the time. This is the final episode of Tutorial Series 2 by Urban Tango Nights. In this episode, we'll be discussing music and covering the longa. Argentine tango music is an interesting subject and to fully cover it is well beyond the time limit we have for this video. Therefore, we have to very briefly describe some of it and suggest that you do your own research by looking online and discussing it with other tango dancers. But please be aware in mind that personal preferences and opinions do not tell the whole story, therefore trying to do full research of it is highly recommended. In brief, Argentine tango is commonly said to be able to be danced to any form of music within reason. Normally what happens is for the actual tango is danced to a beat of 4-4, four, four. so for those who are not musically minded there is a general pulse of four beats per bar going one, two, three, four, and there is a general sense of tempo which is how many beats there are per minute. So tango is generally reasonably slow between around 80 to 100 beats per minute. As far as the actual history of Argentine tango music, it is very complex and with everything in complex history, again opinion and who's recorded it has a huge effect on what is actually out there. Tango is not just a dance, it's also a form of music. Therefore, they, and they are both linked, but they are separate entities in their own state. Also, the idea of tango music has developed throughout the past 150 or so years. The very early form of Argentine tango bands consisted of flute, guitar and violin. And then in the early 1900s, this developed into what's known as orchestras, which played piano, violin and bandolion. You also come across the terms traditional tango music, nuevo tango music, alternative tango music, and neo tango music. These terms are very ill defined. However, in the specifically in the 1920s to 1950s, as the tango orchestras became more standardised with those three instruments of bandoneon, piano, and violin and record companies started gaining more power of what music was going out there, the tango form became very standardised, even though it did develop over that 30 year period. So that tango music from that early period to the 50s, so 20s to 50s, became known as traditional tango music. However, there was significant development in that period. The orchestras became bigger, the music turned from what's known as rhythmical to melodic. Rhythmical music is ones where there is a rhythm being played on one of the instruments and that becomes the defining factor of that piece of music, while melodic music has the melody as the more defining characteristic. In the 80s, when we had the resurgence of Argentine tango, more tango music was written and this became mainly known as Nuevo tango music and it's a very broad spectrum. 
So in the 1950s, Piazzolla defined the term Nuevo Tango, meaning new tango, when he started playing around with the tango form, adding more instruments, adding jazz. And again, you can look up the life of Piazzolla via the internet and other resources. In the 80s, electronic tango music came around, and this was still music written to tango, and it took elements of traditional, what's known as traditional tango music, maybe remixes. So this is all classed as Nuevo Tango music. Alternative tango music is just music which you can dance tango to, which wasn't specifically written to dance tango to. And neo-tango music basically follows either Nuevo, electronic or alternative tango music and is basically based on a general philosophy and is fairly new in the tango world and has very little definition whatsoever. We say you should be able to dance to all types of music, no matter what you say. Uh, or no matter what uh, the uh, style is, whether it's traditional or, or, or alternative. One of the main principles of tango is that there is no solid beat structure, even though tango has a timing, so musical timing associated with it at 4-4 and that tempo, what you choose to interpret it in it can be something in the melody, something in the harmony, something in the rhythm. For traditional tango music, the strong beats are on the one and the three, which means those are the ones that people tend to move on, and if they want to go into double time, they start moving on the two and the four as well. However, in other forms of tango music, the strong beats might be on the one, two, three, and four, in which case you'll start then doing double times on the one and two and three, so the ideas of double time come there. Or you might just choose to interpret your movement as far as a, mel a melody that has nothing to do with these beats and you can belong beats for as long as you wish. On another side of Argentine tango is that the, you will, if you go to a milonga, and this time we're defining milonga as the social dance where you go to dance with others, you will come across three distinct rhythms. The tango, which as we already said is in 4-4 four, four beat and has a very steady pulse to it. The valse, which is derived from the uh, uh, European Viennese waltz, which is a faster timing in 3, 6, 9 or 12, 8. So it has this sort of circular motion to it. And we'll cover more of this in a later series. And confusingly, another rhythm called malonga. So you can dance a malonga in a malonga. Uh, these, uh, this piece it is generally considered to be more fun than tango. It's quicker, therefore your dancing style has to be adapted to it and can be considered as a form of tango in its own right. Also, at a malonga, you may find that the DJ will play or band will play general music um, with no sort of structure to the playlist or what you will commonly find is what's known as tandas and cortinas. Tandas are arrangements of three or four pieces of music separated by, separated by a cortina which is a piece of non-tango music or some other form of music which is played for 20, to 20, 20 seconds to a minute to be able to clear the floor so more dancers can join and you can ask another person to dance. It is one of the etiquettes of tango, though not a strict etiquette if you do not wish to do this, to dance an entire tanda with one person. Those tandas can be divided up into multiple ways, so quite often you will see a tanda of three songs with two tangos followed by a milonga, then the cortina, and the next tanda will have two tangos followed by a valse, and then this will cycle throughout the evening. Or some milonga spots will have a Tanda of tangos, followed by a tanda of malongas, followed by another tanda of tangos, followed by another tanda of valses, and this will cycle through the night. So there are many different ways. In the rest of this video now, we will just look at some of the common steps you can do in malonga. That being the malonga with. <laughs> So as we said, longer tend to be a bit faster. It developed from the Habanaro rhythm, which is an African rhythm. 
So it's much quicker than what Tango music would be done to, therefore we tend to take smaller steps. It's also developed at the same time as the Tango from the Chenyenge. Therefore, it has a slightly different motion to tango. Where tango is walked around the floor, the malongos tend to be danced in a box step which travels, but may travel forward or may travel sideways. Therefore, we'll just cover some of the basic box patterns that you will see. In tango, it's normally a very bad idea to step backwards. However, if you're dancing in the sideways box, the backward step is acceptable. However, for this video, we'll start with a side step to the left. We're going to twist our chest towards the follower and step outside, so we're going to do an outside walk. If you're interested in learning how to do outside walk, please refer to episode 2 of Tuition Series 1, and for side steps, it's episode 3 of Tuition Series 1. And I'm going to step outside, back in line with my follower, take a side step to the right, close my feet together and change weight, leading my follow into uh, changing weight as well. We can then do a small back step and we're ready to go to the side again. Outside. So this is a basic box which will allow you to dance on the beats of the uh, Malonga rhythm. Malonga rhythm is divided into two types of Lisa and Traspi. Lisa is dancing on every main beat of the bar, so this is where this box can come in useful. So we can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. So this is where this box can come into this. We can modify the box by adding more forward steps, more backward steps, more side steps. We can also do the trusty rhythm, which has a sense of double time to it. So one, two and three, four and one, for example. And we can, again, emphasize that with this simple box by, again, step to the side. One, two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one. So we can add the double time into this simple box. We can also change elements of it, such as the side steps, by going one, two and three, three, four and one, so we can do side steps to either side to emphasize this, or we can do a range of double time movements, which is continuous, going again with a side step, one and two and three and four and one. A common mistake we will see in Malonga is when you are moving quickly in Argentine tango, you tend to have a slight rock through your body as you lead, as you're effectively doing a balance sail which some people interpret as, as a upper body motion. We should rock through our body, not and while keeping the upper uh, body in sync with our lower body, otherwise the follower will not be able to feel the lead through this. Therefore, any motion should come through the whole body as we change weight. One of the common steps with our Tintango to emphasise this double time is the Traspi step which are taps to the side, so they are half changes of weights then coming back. So again, from our box, if I take a side step to my left, I can go to the lead my follower and bring it back, and I can do this on the other side as well. And I've got options then to either close my feet together and take them into a forward step, or I've got options to complete the side step before moving on. So we have these uh, options for Malonga. We can also do ochos in Malonga, and these have been known as mini ochos. Because we are moving faster, therefore taking smaller steps, the ocho also becomes smaller and can either be done as forward or backwards. Therefore, my side step to the left tends to be smaller, my side step to the right, and therefore the follower does smaller steps as well, and the same for our forward ochos. We also have opportunities to do rock steps in, our, uh, in Malonga. Again, if we go to our basic box, as we step to the side, we step forward and can rock the weight. And again, that's an excellent way of 
showing the double time nature of Malonga, and if you so wish, you can do decorations by doing little taps behind and uh, castigada bellows, which will cover more of these forms of decoration in series three. We hope you've enjoyed this uh, tuition series and we hope you're looking forward to series three. Thank you for watching and please keep practicing and we hope to see you in a class or more longer sometime soon. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon to get notifications every time we upload a video. Please follow us on social media and visit our website to subscribe to our newsletter. Links in the description below.